I'm Neha Parashar, working in a healthcare company and based in Germany. The preparation of IND application and then submitting it to US FDA needs full attention and a very good preparation. Otherwise, any information request or issue raised by US FDA can lead to the clinical hold or the delay in the access of drugs to the patients in need. We, as a regulatory professional, make sure that we meet all the US FDA's requirement so that we can avoid such kind of issue. For everyone who is very curious to know how this preparation is done to learn about it, I have explained it in a very easy way by breaking down this entire whole complex process in 9 steps. Don't worry if you do not know any one of these terminologies because in my upcoming video, I will explain each one of these steps in a full detail, explaining why, what, how, when and who part of it. First, in this video, let me give you a flavor about these steps. In step 1, we will discuss about the global regulatory planning as this is the first step companies work when they start any project for the new front. In step 2, we will discuss about the document called as Target Product Profile or in short form we refer it like TPP. This is a very important document because this document defines how our target product or drug formulations look like. Then step 3, we will discuss about how the companies conduct the meetings with USFDA. Anything starting from development issues to clinical or CMC issues can be discussed with USFDA. FDA is very open for discussion and they can advise us on any of the issues. But it's up to us or companies that how we approach to US FDA to make best use of time. In step 4, we'll discuss how the companies plan and prepare the IND application. How does the content of IND looks like? There are sets of requirements and rules which needs to be followed for this preparation. We'll discuss about this in detail. So once the IND applications are prepared, these applications are then submitted to US FDA using a specific format. So in step 5, we'll discuss about this submission. Once the IND applications are submitted to FDA, how US FDA review it? What is the review process and cycle? In step 6, we'll discuss about this review process in detail. In step 7, we'll discuss about the clinical trial registrations. Once the clinical trials are started, there is a specific requirement from US FDA that the information about these clinical trials must be made public on the website called clinicaltrials.gov. So this website is like a database and publicly available. So any person like you and me who wants to know that which company is doing what clinical trials and any information related to it, they can have a look into it. We'll talk about this in detail. Once you start the IND application, it doesn't mean that you submitted it, US FDA reviewed it and then the story is over. No, any changes or amendment in the existing IND applications need to be maintained by a proper life cycle management. If there are major changes in the accurate content, it cannot be changed by companies on their own. Rather, they need again alignment with US FDA. Therefore, in step 8, we will talk about how this IND life cycle management works. And in the last step, that is step 9, we'll talk about how these clinical trials and INDs are ended. If the clinical trials are completed, then the clinical trial completion need to be notified to USFP. There is a specific process for reporting the completion and ending of clinical trials too. We'll discuss about that too. So this was the full overview of IND submission. We'll look into each of these 9 steps in this video series in detail. So do subscribe my channel and click on the notification bell so that you will get to know about my next upcoming videos from this series. Thank you.